Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets project in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to do a sales management system. As in all of my projects, I try to start very simple and then start adding up complexity to the system. So we're going to do a very, very simple sales system that then we can add code and Google Forms and a lot of things so it can make your life easier. But as always, we need to create the basic structure where we can build upon. In a sales management system, actually, I need only two basic sheets the product sheet or services or whatever you sell and the sales sheet. Then I can have a lot of other things. I can have an input form. Then I can have a dashboard. Uh, I can have some people like to have the sales separate in departments or in years. I don't recommend that, especially if your data is not that long. Maybe if it's 100,000 rows, then it could be an option. But at the beginning, I recommend to start with just one sheet. So this is going to be very easy in the beginning, which is going to have a product where we can have maybe a reference, the name of the product. These are the basic things we need, depending on the area you're working on or on the type of product or service you sell, then we're going to have a lot of other things, category, color, size, description, any other thing. For the moment, we're just going to have the price. We're doing a sale management system, so mandatory, we need a price. In my sales, again, we can start with the reference then the name. I could bring the price if I want, if I need to see it again and bring it from here. I have my units and the amount of total amount or that is basically multiplying the price by the units. And the final thing I missed was the date. It is very important to have a date. So this is the basic information I need, but I could have a lot of other things. Again, we could expand this in other videos. We could have a category. We could have the salesperson that, that sold it, the, the store, the region, the client. It could be, it could prove useful. We're going to, as always, to add more things in the future, but let's start with the bare bones version. So this is it basically what i need for my basic sales uh, report or sales management system we're going to add some products let's sell books i could let's have a library an online library we're going to sell some books let's say youngsters to start with nonfiction, zero 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 one and let's start with the power of habit i'm a, I'm a bit productivity nerd so let's have some of my favorites here and I can have another one. Let's have some fiction also. Okay, here, given that this is books, we could, for example, have the author, uh, the, the, there is a, a code for books, ICN, whatever, that, that is the, the universal number for books. So we could also have that. And the rating, I don't know, we could have a lot of things, uh, but just let's keep it this way. And then let's say all of my books are going to have a price between 10 and $15. So this, let's say, let's have um run between 10 and 15. pasted as values that's it I have my product and i have my price what i want here is every time i have a sale put it here so the first validation we're going to do is in the a column we're going to have a date validation so that i make sure that i cannot put anything that is not a date then the reference is going to be a drop down from this one again this is where it gets tricky because some of you will prefer to have first the name and not the reference because it's easier if you're looking for it and putting it manually it's easier to uh, search for the name and not for the reference so if you want we could do it let's let's start this way and in the next video we could change it let's let's begin with this first way so we're going to have a data validation for the range in this we're going to start in the product sheet in the A2 cell and go to the up to the A 
that is to the last row we can find. Let's say OK. Let's reject the input. And we have it here. Now the name. The name is going to be a VLOOKUP. Look. I'm going to look up this reference here in this database. And I'm going to bring the second column, that is the name. And finally, we have the mandatory zero argument. We close the VLOOKUP. We have an error because there is nothing in the ref, but we're going to, to change this. Let's give it a bit more zoom. And we can have this nested in an if error function for these cases where my VLOOKUP returns an, an error. So if my VLOOKUP returns an error, just leave it blank so it looks nicer. The price is the same thing. We're going to fix this with an F4 and fix this, but only in the column with three times F4. Press enter, bring it. I'm going, I dragged it to the next column because it's the same exact formula for the price. The difference is that I don't need the second column, but the third column, okay? The units is going to be a manual field, but I want it to have a validation that the units can only be a number greater than zero. So I, can, I cannot have negative numbers. And the amount is going to be a formula where I multiply the price times the units. I don't want the formula to give me zero when this is blank. I just want it to leave it blank. So for this, I'm going to uh, nest it in, a, in an if function that if the units are blank, are equal to double quotation, then leave it blank. If not, do the, the, the product or the multiplication. That's it. Let's test it with any of my references. I'm going to have a date. The, the good thing about adding the data validation is that I could do double click here and have a little calendar that helps me a lot to bring my dates. And here I can have the units and let, let's say it's one unit and I have my amount here. I don't know why it's in this format. I'm going to format it currency and this also. And that's it. That is my sales sheet. What I want to do now is I'm going to delete this, delete the date, delete the reference, delete the units, and I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to copy it with Ctrl C, go down with Ctrl Shift down, and paste it with Ctrl V, so I can have all my data validations and my formulas in all the rows. Okay, so now I can add whatever I want. And it automatically fills the formulas that I put. Let's change this. So that's it. It's very easy. Again, we can add a lot of things and we could change this a lot of ways. I just wanted to have this basic template. Let's buy some function. Now I'm going to finish with a small dashboard where I can see how my sales are behaving. There are a lot of ways of doing dashboards. There are a lot of systems actually where I can do a dashboard. Maybe it's better to do it in a Google Data Studio. So for a, another lesson, another video of this series, we could do it in Data Studio, but we can begin here. So I can have here a summary of sales where I can have my unit sold and amount, total amount. This is as easy as adding up with a sum. All the units I've bought here. And in total amount, I'm going to add all these amounts. So during the duration of my project, of my store, I have sold eight units, eight books, and for a total of $105. This is good, but it doesn't tell me anything. Maybe better to, to see the last month or to see it on a month by month basis. We can maybe do a pivot table. I'm not such a fan of pivot tables, but we could do this. We could have we could do a pivot table of this. 
pivot table we're going to do it in an existing sheet we're going to shoot to choose our dashboard here create it and uh, we're going to have just i want to see month by month so i'm going to the good thing about pivot tables is that i could do something like this i could have my date here in the in the rows let's say and for now that's it and i'm going to bring my units to the values i'm going to bring the units and the amount and here i'm going to create a pivot date group that is month and i could also create a year right now i only have months from this 2021 so it's a matter and i want to remove this zero so i'm going to add a filter for the date and it's not a traditional filter where I choose, right? Remove these blanks because if I remove it, it's going to be a problem for next dates that I add. So it's better to filter by condition. And I'm going to say that it's not empty and so that I can remove these fields where the date is empty. Say, okay, and I remove it. I could change this to units and this to sales or amount, whatever. And now I can see a better picture because I can see how many units I've sold in each month. Finally, I can have a bestseller list. Here I can say sales by month. And here I'm going to have bestsellers. And we're going to do this with a query function. But it may be a bit advanced if you've never used it, but it's very, very useful. So we're going to do what I can do with queries, filter and order in any way I want. Arrange. So I'm going to Again, have these sales, and I'm going to just list them for now. So I can just do this. And this is basically a copy of my database. But I don't want to show all these columns. I just want to have the name, the units, and the amount. That's it. Or, or maybe just the units. Because I just I want to know what are the books that sell the most. So I'm going to do in my query, I'm going to select the column C and the column E. That's it. And I'm going to order by the units, by E, in a descending way. I want to see from the ones that sell the most to the ones that sell the least. And that's it. So here we have them, our best sellers. And then we can, when we have more data, we can put some more filters. This is a very, very basic dashboard that then we can add some colors, some graphics, more things. The objective of a dashboard is to show you how is your project doing? How much have you sold? How many units? How is the evolution month by month? What are the products that sell the most? What are the categories that sell the most or the least? And things like that. What are the regions, the stores that sell more, that sell less? Is to see in a picture the way your project or business is doing, the way, in this case, the way your sales are doing. If they are going down, if they're going up, why they're going down, why they're going up. So this is the, the, the reason we do this dashboard. Again, it's not pretty, but it's not my objective to do it pretty. In some next videos, we could put it a bit more yeah, professional and attractive. So that's it. Very simple sales database that we can add a lot of things. We could add some invoices. We could here, once we, we do the sale, that we could generate automatically the invoice. We could add more things to the product. We could add some categories. We could add some dependent drop downs and a lot of more things that we're going to do in the next video. So thank you so much. So remember that you can find the templates for these and all the projects in the channel in my Patreon page. This is a good way to support me. If not, you can hit the subscribe button and the notifications button on the down left corner and just any comment, any feedback can help a lot. So thank you so much and see you next time.